Comedy Store tonight, a Comedy Store special with Wales' finest, it's Rod Gilbert! Hello! Hello, good evening! Are you well? It's very nice to be here. I'm Rod, I'm, I'm from Wales. The sheep noise. You thought you'd do a little sheep noise, did you, madam? <laughs> I don't care who it was, I just don't understand the thinking of people who do sheep noises. What, what goes through your mind? Do you think that guy is Welsh? <laughs> he shags sheep. <laughs> I will do my best to pretend to be a sheep. <laughs> Two things go through my mind. Either one, you're a sheep. <laughs> playing a very risky game. <laughs> or two, you're an Englishman pretending to be a sheep, which in many ways is a much riskier game. Would you not agree? <laughs> anyway, you laugh, you make your sheep noises. You have no idea, do you? Do we have any Welsh people in? Hey! No. <laughs> Nobody cheers and punches the air when they're Welsh. <laughs> Nobody Welsh has ever cheered and punched the air, madam, about it. I've been doing this job too long. You can't fool me. <laughs> I've been doing this job four years. In the old days, I would come out sometimes, I would say, is there anyone from Wales? And somebody would cheer and I would naively assume <laughs> that that person was, in fact, Welsh. <laughs> That was a long time ago. I've since learned my lesson. I now realise that when I'm from Wales, I say I'm from Wales, people from other countries cheer because they're not Welsh. <laughs> it's almost involuntary, it's spontaneous. It just bursts out. It's relief. It's, I come out, I say, I'm from Wales. Somebody goes, yes! I say, are you Welsh? No, mate, you are. <laughs> you have no idea how tough it is. Do you? you have no idea, do you? Look, you have no... I was eight before I realised you could take a cagoule off, madam. <laughs> Over your head, I had no idea. Did you know that? <laughs> I had no idea. In the Bible, God made it rain for 40 days and 40 nights. That is still the best summer on our record, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen. There was a hosepipe ban that year. <laughs> I've got webbed fingers. <laughs> I wasn't supposed to elicit that much laughter, to be honest. There it is. Look, there you go. Can you see that? Can you see that? Can you... Don't recoil in horror, you. <laughs> It's just because I'm Welsh, we've evolved to cope with the bloody damp. It's not a big deal. This, this is nothing. I got friends back home who can pass for scampi, if you're interested in that. <laughs> you hold my nephew to your ear, you can hear the sea, if you listen carefully. <laughs> it's right for you. You come from Australia, don't you? Paradise, isn't it? Paradise, you know, isn't it? Do you know that they're worried about climate change? People were asking me, you know, say, are you worried about climate change? I'm Welsh. <laughs> Bring it on! <laughs> oh, but the sea may warm up by a couple of degrees. I'm thinking, great, next summer I can go swim without a fucking hat and scarf. It'll be lovely. <laughs> I've escaped from Wales now, ladies and gentlemen. I've escaped from Wales. I live here in London, you know. But, you know, I always wanted to escape. I never wanted to do this, though. I never thought that I'd be doing stand-up comedy here in London. I never wanted to... Nobody ever does the job they dream of doing when they're a kid, do they? Do they, no, does anybody here do the job that they dreamt of as a child? No. No, I, I was looking more for the yeses, really, to be honest. <laughs> and those people answering on behalf of the whole friggin' audience, I know. Yeah, nobody does. I've only met one woman. I asked her, I said, do you do the... She said, yes. I said, what do you do? She said, I'm a midwife. I said, did you always dream of being a midwife, even when you were a little girl? She said, yes. I thought, that's hot. <laughs> It is quite odd, isn't it? When I was a little boy, I'd walk down the street and my, hold my mother's hand, you know? I'd be walk past a big building, you think, Mummy, I want to work in there on the top floor. I want to be the president of that company. You'd see a plane, you think, Mummy, Mummy, I want to fly that plane. <laughs> Midwife. <laughs> what did that little girl look up and see? <laughs> Mummy, I could pull something out of that. <laughs> Thank you.
I wanted to join the Navy. That's what I wanted to do, actually, if I'm truthful. I wanted to join the Navy when I was a little boy. I, I always thought I'd escape from Wales, see the world like my granddad, join the Navy, go on a boat, go somewhere drier. <laughs> so I'd start with the sea. <laughs> and I heard an advert, an advert on the radio last year. It ran and ran. It shattered my dreams. Some of you will remember this advert, right? It, they were trying to persuade you to become a chef in the Royal Navy, right? And it got me very confused. It put me off. I realised it was... I could never join. It said, can you... Can you fry an egg? <laughs> can you fry... I remember the first time I ever heard that advert and I thought, no. <laughs> no, I can't. <laughs> Maybe the Navy's not for me. <laughs> And then it said, could you fry an egg on a boat? <laughs> I thought, no. <laughs> then it said, could you fry an egg on a boat in a storm? <laughs> I thought, no. <laughs> I thought, to be honest, you're not making this any easier. <laughs> in some ways, it's getting more difficult to fry this fucking egg of yours. <laughs> In fact, maybe you're talking to the wrong person. Maybe you're looking for somebody who said yes to the first question. <laughs> and then it got very confusing. It drove me, went nuts. He said, could you fry 200 eggs for 200 hungry sailors on a boat in a storm while you're being bombed by the enemy? And I thought, no. <laughs> the answer's still no, mate. The answer's still no. And I thought it hit me at a break. I thought, maybe I could do scrambled eggs. <laughs> Oh, let's face it, they practically made themselves by this point. <laughs> I thought, is anybody gonna mind? Is anyone really gonna mind if I bring out scrambled eggs instead of fried eggs tonight? You know, there's a battle going on. Is, it, is the Navy gonna kick off if I send this slight change to the menu? It's scrambled eggs instead of fried eggs. Is everybody gonna go mad if I bring out scra... I thought, come to think of it, maybe this isn't the best time to be thinking about dinner at all. <laughs> maybe we should try and fend off the enemy first. <laughs> right, if any of us survive, we can always get a takeaway later, can't we? that <laughs> Life's confusing, though, isn't it? Do you find life confusing, Australia? She likes... She finds life confusing, does she? I, well, she's Australian, that's me. I hate Australia. <laughs> you wind people up, you can't help yourselves. Right? As soon as they get off the plane, once you find out people are scared of creepy crawlies and you're so rel... Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, don't worry about that little fella. Don't worry about that little fella. He'll just burrow into your anus and eat your brain. Yeah, don't worry. <laughs> Don't worry, oh, that over there, that'll eat you alive. But it looks like a poodle. Yeah, it's a Tasmanian man-eating poodle, mate. Yeah, yeah. yeah, that'll kill you in ten minutes. That's a brown snake, it'll kill you in eight. That's a red-backed spider, it'll kill you in six. That'll kill you in three. That's neighbours, that we call that neighbours, mate. Yeah. <laughs> Can't help yourselves. I know why you're so relaxed about it. It's because you made them up. They made them up. If you've been there, did you see anything? No! Four months, I was there, nothing. You made them up because you, want, you live in this paradise and you don't want to share it with the people like us. You don't want to share it with the rest of them. It's like, if you've been there, it works. It's, ter it's like being in an episode of Scooby-Doo. <laughs> you haven't got any of these things. You've made them. You haven't got any crocodiles, you haven't got any snakes. Danny Minogue, you made her up for a start. <laughs> red back spiders, just normal spiders you've coloured in. Admit it. <laughs> Some of these things are quite scary. They are, they're scary to me. Some of them are just nonsense, right? Nonsense. Well, if you've been there, if you go to Queensland, they will terrify you with this thing called the box jellyfish. <laughs> the box jellyfish, right? And if you, if you question them, they've got no idea what it is. <laughs> no idea what it is, because they've made it up, right? The best answer I got, I was in a bar where some woman said, don't go near the sea, mate, the box jellyfish will get you. And it is shaped like a box. <laughs> And the full horror of that didn't quite hit me until she went. <laughs> and then it hit me, I thought, shit, you're right, I've seen boxes, they are terrifying. <laughs> I worked in a warehouse for two years, I still get the nightmares. <laughs> oh, it's not that it's shaped like a box, no, it lives in a box, no, it's made a box, no, it's the head of a fish in the body of a box, no, it'll put you in a box, no, it lives in a woman's growler. You just make it up. <laughs> It's all an elaborate excuse. Do you know what they do to you if you get stung by one of these box jelly? Do you know what they do? They piss on you. They piss on tourists, ladies and gentlemen. Now would be a good time for revenge, I feel. At this point in the show, many people here are desperate. Stop pissing on tourists. How many of you have seen somebody struggling down by Buckingham Palace with a map and thought, I know what's needed here? Yeah? <laughs> I'll knock this American to the floor and squat in his face. That's what I'll do, yes. 
Haven't you got savlon in Australia? What's wrong with you? What are you going to do if I get bitten by a snake? Shit in my eye? I've got no idea. After the break, it's more from Rod Gilbert. Stay tuned. Life is confusing, Lizzie. I've been, I've been reading the Bible for guidance re uh, recently. Has anybody else read the Bible for guidance in their life? For no, but it, well, it's very confusing, isn't it? It's very confusing. Listen to this. This is from Galatians. This is the bit that stumped me. I got very... It said, it said in Galatians, it said that the unrighteous and the unjust shall not inherit the kingdom of God. The unrighteous and the unjust. I didn't know who they were, do you? <laughs> I've got no idea what they are, but if you read Galatians, it says that they are drunkards, <laughs> the jealous, the angry, sexual perverts, the immoral, fornicators, sodomites, or those with a party spirit. <laughs> We're all fucked. <laughs> Beat that list back, rearrange it a bit, had a party, got drunk, got jealous, got angry, had impure thoughts, then fornicated and sodomized. That's a night out for you, what's it, is it? <laughs> It's a grey area, that's my point. It's a some of these things, don't you think, like, some of these... Sodomy? Fair enough. <laughs> no, you're either in or you're out. <laughs> but sexual pervert, who... That's a grey area, isn't it? Sexual pervert. Who here considers themselves a sexual pervert? <laughs> you do... Did you nod there, sir? Were you nodding at that? <laughs> you consider yourself a sexual pervert? Do you? Do you? A little bit. <laughs> It's an occasional thing, is it? It just comes out of you. <laughs> See, do we have any couples in? Yay. Where are you? You a couple there, you two? <laughs> Madam, would you consider him to be a sexual pervert? <laughs> Sometimes. Sometimes. <laughs> would you like to share with us? <laughs> It's a very grey area, I think. I don't know if I'm a sexual pervert or not, right? I don't... I've got no idea. I went into a sex shop at Christmas for the first time in my life. Does that make me...? It was an Ann Summers. <laughs> That's... It's a... It's a lingerie shop, you see? It's a lingerie... Is it a sex shop? Is it a lingerie shop? We're not sure, right? But I, you know, I was a bit... I was very embarrassed about it, to be fair. Just by a quick show of hands, who's been into an Ann Summers or a sex shop of any kind? <laughs> oh, you lying fuckers! <laughs> Because there's 500 people in this room, 12 of you have been in. <laughs> Let's sort this out. Who's never been in? <laughs> right. <laughs> None. That's 500 people in this room, 12 of you have been in, none of you haven't, that leaves 488 undecided. <laughs> it's getting a bit busy up on that fence with all of you sat up there, isn't it? <laughs> Maybe you're too shy, you see. I was shy, I'm 30. So those of you, who put, who put your hand up again? Who's been in? You've been in, sir. Were you embarrassed when you went in? Yes, were you? No. Oh. <laughs> oh, look at you. No. <laughs> oh, clear the shelves, into the trolley, in it goes. Clear the shelves. Clear the shelves. Separate trolley for dogs and horses. There they go, here they go, yes, in it goes. I was embarrassed, 37 years old, I've never been in before. The only, I didn't even want to go in. The only reason I went in was I had a girlfriend last Christmas who was too embarrassed. She wanted what I will call a device. <laughs> she was too embarrassed to go in and get it, so she sent me on an errand. <laughs> I've never been so embarrassed, man. I've never been in 37 years. I head down, this is how I did it, head down straight to the display. I didn't want to be bothered by any shop assistants. You got your head down, you don't catch anybody's eye. Embarrassed, right? But the problem is they overtrain the staff. <laughs> they overdrain the staff. This little girl, she was 18, she looked 12. <laughs> she was probably 18 to work in there. She bounded up to me, full of confidence, youngster. She said, can I help you? I panicked. I said, no, it'll go down on its own in a second. We'll be fine. <laughs> I panicked. She said, that's not what I meant. That's not what I meant. I meant, can I offer you any assistance? Choosing a device for your back. Can I offer you any assistance? I thought, no, please go away. Just leave me. She wouldn't shut it. She started recommending <laughs> her personal favourites. <laughs> You'd have been embarrassed at that, surely. He's recommending her... Oh, get her this one, get her this one. This one'll make her come in two minutes. This one'll... This one'll make her orgasm in a minute. This is a new one. This one'll get her there in 30 seconds. And 30... She's after an orgasm, not the land speed record. Let's all come... <laughs> oh, 
we'll get on this one. This will really tickle her clitoris thingy. It'll really, it'll really get in there. It'll really get... Oh, this one will tickle her bottom as well. Oh, get on this one. Get on this one. You like this one. You put this one on. I was like, whoa, 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 whoa. I'm not putting anything on. I'm to come down here. I'm to get this thing. I'm to take it home. I'm logistics. <laughs> These are sex toys, by the way, right? I hope you appreciate that. This is an 18-year-old. I'm 37 years old. These are sex toys. I can't take advice from an 18-year-old about sex toys. Normal toys? Fair enough. <laughs> She's got stuff to say about Kaplunk. I'll listen, right? <laughs> the best playing surface for Jenga. I'm all ears, right? But I can't take advice about from sex toys. We went out. Have you been out to the... Have you been out to the back? If you go out to the back, have you been out to the back of a sex shop? Because it goes a bit weird, doesn't it? <laughs> the atmosphere changes. Do you not agree? It goes a bit weird. It goes a bit dark and a bit dingy, a bit seedy, yes. And it, there's water running down the walls. And it goes a bit... <laughs> it is. A, and that's where they have the leathers and the shackles and the chains and the whips and the handcuffs. She said, have you thought about whipping your girlfriend, sir? Have you thought about chaining her up? What about handcuffing her to the bed and then whip her? I was like, no, I haven't. I haven't. We get on pretty well. <laughs> Surely I should give her a verbal warning before I beat the crap out of her anyway. Three strikes and you're out would be reasonable, wouldn't it? I said, I said, don't get me wrong, she can be a bit irritating at times. I refuse to drive her to yoga once, that's as far as I've gone. <laughs> Every shop in the world has little things by the till, rubbish you don't need, doesn't it, to encourage you to make that little extra purchase. You didn't go in there for this thing, but you always buy it. In Anne Summers, they've got weird little, horrible little chocolate willies. <laughs> I want to. I've got a matching pair of chocolate. I haven't even got a mantelpiece. I don't know what the hell was going through my mind. <laughs> edible knickers. Have you seen those? Edible knickers. I bought three pairs. I had two of them on the bus on the way home. <laughs> it had been a long day. I'd ordered a sandwich from pret a -Manger. I was starving. <laughs> At one point, I said, I'm not having that pair. Somebody's had a bite out of those in the shop. She said, they're crotchless knickers, you idiot. <laughs> She asked me the most embarrassing question I've ever been asked in my life. Uh, 37 years old, for the first time, standing in front of all this weird, wonderful array of ladies. She asked me, I think she thought I wanted grade, you see. Because <laughs> there's a big range, isn't there? There's a big old range there, you see, and I didn't know how big it was. I think she thought I wanted... She, she, she said to me, what are you using at the moment? <laughs> Which particular one of these beauties? Which particular one are you using? Which one are you stimulating your... Which particular model? I was like, I, I, I'm Welsh. I'm still whacking it with a shoe. <laughs> <laughs> That's what you're doing. Where's you get the biggest shoe you can find? It's probably your dad's. So just hope you hit something relevant. That's what you... Hope you hit something with some feeling in it. That's what you've got to do. It's a big old area, isn't it? It's a big area to get through. But it's all a crumpled mess. You've got to whack it flat. That's what you've got to do. It's like a map. You've got to whack it flat before you can see where you're going, haven't you? It's true. We don't know what we're looking for, do we? It's notoriously difficult to find the old clittery thingy. It is no it's notoriously difficult to find. I remember the first... Do you remember the first time you found one, Jack? Because I remember, uh, for boys, you know, 17 years old, 18 years old, and you find your first one. <laughs> don't you? I found my first clittery... Well, it wasn't mine, it was hers, but you know what I'm saying? It was... <laughs> it's not finders, keepers, is it? You've got to... You've got to give it back at the end of the evening, haven't you, of course? But I found it. I was so excited. You, we've all been there, haven't we? You're so excited. You can't wait to tell your friends to brag about it. And then I was so worried about losing it again, I trapped it under a glass. <laughs> see, does that make me a sexual pervert? I'm not sure, you see. This is the point. It's back to the Bible. This is the point. It's very difficult to live by the Bible. Look at you, scum. <laughs> not, not my words, God's. <laughs> Have you read Deuteronomy? No, you're wearing trousers. Have you read Deuteronomy? No, clearly not. <laughs> Do you know what the Lord says in Deuteronomy? He says, women shall not wear garments that pertaineth unto a man, for all that do so are an abomination unto the Lord thy God. How do you feel now? <laughs> you're an abomination. That's what you are. You're an abomination. That's who you are. Get a skirt on. God wants you in a mini, all right? <laughs> yes. He wants to see a little bit of flesh, all right? He's a leg man, essentially. God is a leg man, OK? That's what you're doing from that. Oh, then there's the Ten Commandments. Does anybody here live by the Ten Commandments? It's, it's very difficult, you know. Do you know what they say in the Ten Commandments? It says, do not dishonour your parents. That's one of them. Do not... That's a laugh, isn't it? <laughs> they fucking started it. <laughs> My parents switched me. 
I was one day old. You read about it all the time. A one day old in the maternity ward. There's all those other babies lined up. You know, I wouldn't have minded if they'd taken one of them. And then they took a vase. <laughs> <laughs> it's not funny. Don't I? My mother ran off with the milk. Anyway, it's not funny, is it? I'm glad you didn't laugh for that. Sometimes people laugh when I tell people that, but it's not funny. She ran off with me. I was six years old, you know, and off she went with the, with the milkman. And I'm over it now. I've dealt with it, you know, but it was hard. It's hard to, you know, he just turned up on his milk float one day and off they went. And <laughs> I had to watch them go. It was the worst three hours of my life. <laughs> Stopped at every house on our street. It's hard, isn't it? Living by the, the Bible is hard. Do you know what? I'll tell you, another, I'll tell you the, the worst one from my point of view is, is that... What Bible? <laughs> did, you say, did you say what Bible? Did you, you're a Welsh girl and, and you want to know what Bible I'm talking about. <laughs> you, to be honest, you're, you're kind of illustrating my point that I was going to come on to, really. And my point is it's very difficult, if you're Welsh, to commit adultery, right? Because we've got nothing in common with the rest of the world, right? Because when you... You know, because we, we say potato. See? Nobody else says it like that, do they? Because, you know, when you meet somebody and you do that thing, don't you? You want to you know if this is the one. Don't you want to know? You want to know if you're compatible, if this is the one, your partner for life. So you, you meet them and you, you say, potato. <laughs> no, and you see how they say it. And, and, and if they say it the same way, you're meant to be together. And if you don't play thick, we all do this. <laughs> don't play thick. Don't look at me dull like that. If you say, potato, and if they say it the same way, you're meant to be together. <laughs> And then if they say it differently, call the whole thing off, like the song says. That's what the song says, and that's the way it works, isn't it? I can't believe it's pretending this doesn't happen. This is what everybody does. You say potato, right? And the problem is that we're the only people in the world who say potato. <laughs> it's true, right? You go anywhere else in the world, like Australia. Right? I met a girl in Australia, I said potato. I say potato. It's different, isn't it? You know, it's, uh, it's different, right? It's different. And that's not surprising, because Australia's on the other side of the world. And then, but even if you come closer to home, England, you know, it's, uh, you know, it's potato or whatever. However, they, and, and nobody says it like us. And that's the problem, you know? Because even, even the Celtic countries, do we have Scottish people here? See, we're, you're Scottish, you see, because even I went to Edinburgh Festival and I thought, well, this, maybe, maybe, you know, there's the Celtic link, because you've got the soft, lilting accent as well, haven't you? It's the same, but it's not the same. I don't know if, if there's any foreigners in, I don't know if you can hear if your ear is attuned enough to pick out the difference, right? But it is different, it's subtly, because I met a girl in the Edinburgh Festival, I thought, it's not too soon. It's not too soon, let's do the test. I said, potato. <laughs> and you've got that subtle, they said, Tati! I'm not making that up. The difference is there, isn't it? It's subtle. <laughs> it's subtle, but it is there, you know? No, it is there. It's there. I'm not making that up. It is there, you know? And then you go, Ireland, a Celtic country again. Soft, lilting accent. Do you think it would work there? I met a girl in Dublin. Hopeless. I said, potato. <laughs> yeah, she went fucking nuts. <laughs> she tore my flat apart looking for the thing. Was... <laughs> Don't be hiding it from me. Don't be hiding it from me. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, that's my time. Thank you very, very much.